playing with power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while still supporting local game stores. And Patreon, where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. We are excited to announce our very own custom Dragon Shield sleeves. You can find these on our store along with tons of other great Playing With Power merch. Pick up your custom Playing With Power sleeves today. Links are in the description below. At the end of April, we will be going to SCGCon Pittsburgh. We will be playing CDH in the Command Zone and recording games while we are there. Stop by, say hello, and let's all jam some games together. Starting April 2nd to the end of April, our Patreon League is returning. We will be giving away $1,000 in cash prizes. All you have to do to enter is sign up to our Patreon. Sign up today and let's play. Links are in the description below. Our Mox Ruby tier on Patreon lets patrons submit decks for us to battle. That's what this game is tonight. So, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Noah piloting the partner pair of Krom, Ludovic's Opus, and Timna the Weaver, with Obosh the Prey Piercer as the companion. This is a Dragon's Approach deck submitted by our patron, Rio. It seeks to control the board, grind value with its commanders, and eventually tutor out a dragon with Dragon's Approach to apply maximum pressure to its opponents. Noah's opening hand contains a Watery Grave, Prismatic Vista, Mr. Grimora, Vampiric Tutor, Semblance Anvil, Dragon's Approach, and an Archon of Emeria. Next, we have Mike piloting Togar, Famine Incarnate. This is an ad nauseum deck submitted by our patron, that one guy. It seeks to resolve ad nauseum, peer into the abyss, or bolus the citadel as fast as possible, and win with an Aetherflux Reservoir combo. Mike's opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Swamp, Imp's Mischief, Jet Medallion, Opposition Agent, Grim Tutor, and a Necromancy. Next, we have Zack piloting the partner pair of Thrasios Triton Hero and Akiri, the Line Slinger. This is a polymorph deck submitted by our patron, Mikey. This deck seeks to resolve one of several different polymorph effects to put Hole Breaker Horror, Tide Spot Tyrant, or Spellseeker into play and win with a combo. Zack's opening hand contains a Mental Misstep, City of Brass, Emergent Zone, Ancient Tomb, Plateau, Mystic Remora, and his London Mulligan is a windfall. Finally, we have Cal, piloting Jury, Master of Revu. This is a combo deck submitted by patron Jordan. It seeks to loop sacrificing permanence along with its commander to kill the table. Cal's opening hand contains a Swamp, Ad Nauseum, Lotus Petal, Ancient Tomb, Deadly Rollick, Mana Confluence, and his London Mulligan is a Twin Flame. Without further ado, let's begin this slithering, slimy, sweet and sour secret assembly of stars. Noel won the dumpling eating challenge and gets to start us off. But Mike has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield with a luck counter, exiling Necromancy. Noah draws and plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Mystic Remora. In response, Zack pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Remora. Saddened, Noah passes the turn. Mike draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Jet Medallion. He passes. Zack draws and plays a Hollowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Mystic Remora. It resolves, and with Noah cursing Zack's name, the turn moves to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He ends the turn. Noah draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. He passes. Mike draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Phyrexian Walker. Mike ends the turn. During his upkeep, Zack pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. Zack passes. Cal draws and plays a Swamp. He taps Mana Confluence to cast his commander, Jury, Master of Revu. Cal ships the turn. At the end of Cal's turn, Noah cracks his Prismatic Vista, pays a life, and fetches up a Plains onto the battlefield. He casts Vampiric Tutor. Remora triggers, and in response, Mike flashes in an opposition agent. Agent resolves, Zack draws from Remora, and Mike tutors a card from Noah's deck into exile, and Noah loses two life. With nothing going the way it's supposed to, the turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Hollowed Fountain into play untapped to pain two life. He casts Archon of Emeria. Noah ends the turn. Mike draws and casts the card he exiled from Noah's deck, Rhystic Study. Remora triggers and Zack draws. Rhystic resolves and Mike moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Opposition Agent. Zack takes the hit and Mike passes. During his upkeep, Zack taps his Ancient Tomb to pay for Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a City of Brass into play tapped through Archon. Zack ships the turn. 
Cal draws and plays an Ancient Tomb into play tapped through Archon. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Jury. Zack takes the hit and Cal ends the turn. Noah draws and casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Timna resolves and Noah moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Archon of Emeria. Mike takes the hit and in his second main phase, Timna triggers. Noah pays a life and draws a card. With nothing else, Noah ships the turn. Mike draws and plays a Swamp. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Opposition Agent. Zack takes the hit and in his second main phase, Mike casts Grim Tutor. Remora triggers and Zack draws. Mike fetches up a card into his hand and loses three life. Mike ends the turn. During his upkeep, Zack lets his Remora die. He draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Arcane Signet. Ristic triggers and Zack pays. He plays the Plateau into play tapped through Archon. Zack gives the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays an Arid Mesa into play tap through Archon. He casts Deadly Rollick for its alternative cost targeting Archon of Emeria. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Archon is exiled and Cal follows it up with the Lotus Petal. He cracks his petal, taps his Ancient Tomb and Mana Confluence to cast Ad Nauseam. Jury triggers, getting a plus one plus one counter. Ad Nauseam resolves and he reveals a Diabolic Intent, a Braid, Mana Crypt, Mind Stone, Diabolic Tutor, Mox Amber, Beseech the Queen, Inventor's Fair, Dark Confidant, Dire Fleet Daredevil, Underworld Breach, Valakut Awakening, Tybalt's Trickery, Mox Diamond, Dragon Skull Summit, Pyroblast, and a Jessica's Will, deciding to stop there. Cal casts Mana Crypt, Ristic Triggers, and Mike Draws. Cal casts Mox Diamond, Ristic Triggers, and Mike Draws. In response, Zack taps City of Brass to cast Cyclonic Rift, targeting Jury. Ristic Triggers, and Mike Draws. Jury bounces to Cal's hand and Mox Diamond resolves, with Cal discarding Inventor's Fair. He casts Mox Amber. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Mike. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. In response, Mike casts Imp's Mischief, targeting Jessica's Will. Imp's Mischief resolves and changes the target of Jessica's Will to Zack. Will resolves and Cal adds five red mana. He casts Underworld Breach. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. It resolves and Cal escapes Jessica's will targeting Mike. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Will resolves and Cal adds 13 red mana. Cal casts a braid targeting opposition agent. Ristic triggers and Cal pays. Agent dies and Cal follows it up with a dire fleet daredevil. Ristic triggers and Cal pays. Daredevil enters and exiles Mike's grim tutor from his graveyard. Cal casts Grim Tutor. Ristic triggers and Cal pays. Cal tutors a card into his hand and loses three life. Cal casts Dockside Extortionist. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Dockside enters and creates four treasures. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Cal fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Unearth, targeting Dockside. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Dockside enters the battlefield and creates four more treasures. Cal escapes Jessica's will, targeting Mike. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Will resolves and Cal adds 17 red mana. He casts Imperial Recruiter. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Recruiter enters and Cal fetches up a blood pet into his hand. He casts Beseech the Queen. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Cal fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Pyroblast, targeting Ristic Study. Ristic triggers and Cal pays. Ristic is finally destroyed. Cal casts Cloudstone Curio. He casts Blood Pet. In response, Mike pays four life to cast Dismember targeting Dockside Extortionist. Dockside dies and Blood Pet enters. Cal escapes Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters and with the trigger on the stack, Mike casts Slaughter Pact targeting Dockside. Dockside is destroyed and Cal creates three treasures. Cal casts Diabolic Tutor. He fetches a card into his hand and casts Dance of the Dead, targeting Dockside. Dockside enters, triggering Cloudstone Curio and itself. Cal creates three treasures and bounces Blood Pet to his hand. He casts Blood Pet. It enters and he bounces Dockside to his hand, with Dance of the Dead going to his graveyard. He casts Dockside. Dockside enters, creates three treasures, and Cal doesn't bounce anything with Curio. He casts his commander, Jury, Master of Revu. It enters and Curio triggers, bouncing Dockside to Cal's hand. Cal presents a loop of casting Dockside, creating three treasures, bouncing Blood Pet through Cloudstone Curio, cracking treasures to cast Blood Pet, and bouncing Dockside back to his hand. Each time Cal cracks treasures, Jerry gets a plus one plus one counter. 
Cal does this until Jury has 69 million plus one plus one counters. On the final iteration of the loop, Cal bounces Imperial Recruiter to his hand. Cal sacrifices Blood Pet, adding a black. Jury triggers, getting a plus one plus one counter. Cal escapes Jessica's will, targeting Mike, choosing both modes. Cal adds 17 red mana and exiles Ricochet Trap, Wishclaw Talisman, and Slain Gang Lieutenant. He casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters, Curio and Recruiter both trigger. He fetches up an Impulsive Pilferer into his hand and bounces Dockside to his hand. He casts Dockside. It enters, Cal creates three treasures and bounces Recruiter to his hand through Curio. He casts Impulsive Pilferer. It enters and bounces Dockside to his hand through Curio. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He activates Wishclaw, giving it to Noah and fetching a card into his hand. He casts Mayhem Devil. It enters and Cal doesn't bounce anything with Curio. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, creates three treasures, and bounces Impulsive Pilferer to his hand. Cal presents the same Curio loop as before, but with Impulsive Pilferer instead of Blood Pet. Each time he does an iteration of this loop, Mayhem Devil triggers three times, dealing three damage to one of his opponents. He does this over and over, and Cal wins the game. Sheesh! <laughs> Talk about a complicated turn. Let's play another, shall we? In this game, Mike brings back Togar. His opening hand contains a Swamp, Stinging Study, Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Mana Vault, Calling the Weak, and his London Mulligan is a Wishclaw Talisman. Next, we have Zack, bringing back Thrasios and Akiri. Zack's opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Soul Ring, Chrome Mox, Swords to Plowshares, Manamorphose, Chain of Vapor, and a Transmogrify. Next, we have Cal, bringing back Jiri. Cal's opening hand contains a Swamp, Imperial Seal, Mountain, Dockside Extortionist, Impulsive Pilferer, and his London Mulligans are a Mountain and a Red Elemental Blast. Finally, we have Noah, bringing back Krom and Timna. Noah's opening hand contains a Command Tower, Pyroblast, Opposition Agent, Toxic Deluge, Jessica's Will, Faithless Looting, and a Soul Ring. And Mike gets to start us off. But, Zack has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield with a Luck Counter, exiling Transmogrify. Mike draws and plays the Swamp. He casts Mana Vault. He casts Lotus Petal. He casts a Chrome Mox. It enters and Mike imprints, calling the weak. Mike casts Stinging Study. It resolves. Mike draws eight cards and loses eight life. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He casts Ornithopter. He casts Phyrexian Walker. With a ridiculous turn one in the books, Mike ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Manamorphose. He adds a blue and a green mana and draws a card. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Zack gives the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Cal passes. Noah draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Soul Ring. Noah ends the turn. During his draw step, Mike takes a damage from Mana Vault. He plays a Swamp. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Cal. Mike fetches a card from Cal's deck into exile face down. Mike casts Mind Blade Render. It enters and he cracks his Lotus to cast his commander, Togar, Famine Incarnate, sacrificing all of his creatures as an additional cost. It enters targeting Zack. Zack's life total becomes 20 and with nothing else, Mike ends the turn. Zack draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He passes. Cal draws and plays a Mountain. He casts his commander, Jury, Master of the Revu. It enters and Cal ships the turn. At the end of Cal's turn, Zack cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. The turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Zack casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Togar. Togar is exiled and Mike gains 7 life. The turn moves to Mike. During his draw step, Mike takes a damage from Mana Vault. He plays Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. He casts Mirror Moon Vessel. He casts Skull Clamp. He equips Skull Clamp to Mirror Moon Vessel. Moon Vessel dies. It and Skull Clamp both trigger. Mike draws two cards and adds a colorless mana. Mike casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold. He adds five black mana and casts the card he exiled with Praetor's Grasp, Ad Nauseam. In response, Zack activates Thrasios, scries one, and reveals Wooded Foothills into play tapped. Adnaz resolves, and Mike reveals Vampiric Tutor, Kirik, Son of Yogmoth, Swamp, 
Ad Nauseam, Phyrexian Tower, Necropotence, Animate Dead, Yawgmoth's Will, Felwar Stone, Shield Sphere, Swamp, Blood Pet, Soul Ring, Mox Opal, Swamp, Springleaf Drum, and Sidisi's Undead Vizier, stopping there. He casts Shield Sphere. He casts Mox Opal. He casts Soul Ring. He casts Felwar Stone. He casts a Blood Pet. With Adnaz not going in his favor, Mike ends the turn, discarding the hand size. Zack draws and starts his turn off by cracking wooded foothills, paying a life and fetching up a tropical island onto the battlefield. With Mike having the win in his hand, Zack tells Noah that he has a way to stop Mike, but he isn't going to like how. Noah asks if he's going to win instead of stopping Mike from winning. Zack says no and casts Intuition, targeting Noah. Noah is sitting with Opposition Agent in hand and thinking he doesn't really have a good way of using it to win on his turn lets Intuition resolve. Zack fetches up an Underworld Breach, Savine's Reclamation, and a Wheel of Fortune. Noah begrudgingly gives Zack the wheel with Breach and Reclamation going to Zack's graveyard. Zack casts Crow Mox. It enters and he imprints Chain of Vapor. He casts Wheel of Fortune. In response, Noah cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He flashes in Opposition Agent. It enters, and still in response to Wheel, Noah casts Pyroblast targeting Thrasios. In response, Zack casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Pyroblast. Blast is countered, and Wheel resolves. Each player discards their hand and draws seven. Zack casts Mox Amber. He plays a Hollow Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. All finish, Zack ends the turn. Cal draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Dark Confidant. Cal ships the turn. Noah draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Boros Cluestone. He follows it up with an Archon of Emeria. Noah passes. During his draw step, Mike takes a damage from Mana Vault. He plays a Swamp. He casts Villus, Broker of Blood. The table braces for impact as Villus resolves. To the surprise of the table, Mike moves to his end step. At the end of Mike's turn, Zack flashes in Dress Down. It enters and Zack draws a card. The turn then moves to Zack. Zack draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He flashes back Savine's Reclamation targeting Underworld Breach. Breach enters and Savine's Reclamation creates a copy targeting Bloodstained Mire in Zack's graveyard. It resolves and Mire enters the battlefield. He cracks Mire, pays a life, and fetches up a plateau onto the battlefield. He escapes Intuition targeting Noah. He fetches up a Lion's Eye Diamond, Pact of Negation, and Brain Freeze. Noah gives him LED with Pact and Brain Freeze going to Zack's graveyard. Zack casts LED. He cracks LED, discarding his hand and adding three blue mana. He escapes Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Zack mills 12 cards. He escapes LED and cracks it for three blue. He escapes Brain Freeze again, targeting himself with each copy. He mills 18 cards. He escapes Brain Freeze again, milling 21 more cards. He escapes LED and cracks it, adding three blue. Zack presents a loop of escaping Brain Freeze and LED over and over, milling all of his opponent's decks. With their libraries empty, Zack escapes Wheel of Fortune. Each of his opponents try drawing from an empty library, and Zack wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, those were some explosive games. Congrats to Cal and Zack on their wins tonight. In game one, Cal playing his land before killing Archon made his life more difficult than it needed to be. With a misstep or two in his final turn and opponents trying to disrupt his every combo every step of the way, Cal was able to find an extremely convoluted line that led to a very impressive victory. In game two, Zack took full advantage of one of the most potent tools every EDH player has access to politics. He was able to leverage intuition into not only a way to deal with Mike's win, but also set himself up to win later in the game. This just goes to show you that even at a CEDH table, politics can still be a powerful resource for any player. The most valuable card in game one goes to Jessica's Will. Not only did this card single-handedly generate over 30 mana for Cal on his final turn, but it also allowed him to find the cards he needed to close out the game. Card draw plus mana generation is a very powerful combination, and Cal showcased that here tonight. The most valuable card in game two was a little trickier to decide. At first glance, intuition looks to be the clear choice as it allowed Zack to answer Mike's win while setting him up for a victory, but the unsung hero of tonight's game goes to Dress Down. Yes, intuition set up Zack beautifully, but Dress Down is what turned off Noah's stacks pieces, allowing Zack to combo without any restrictions on his turn. 
This is a great card for stopping other players' Docksides, Thoracle wins, and as we saw tonight, shutting off Stacks pieces. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be the king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.